I need to get your reaction to the president's tweet because Kellyanne Conway says this is about getting rid of a few bad actors. A few bad actors? Give me a break. This is about getting rid of Rod Rosenstein because President Trump wants Bob Mueller out of town. Yeah, Stephanie, look, there's not a lot of mystery here um, about what the president's motives are because he's been very clear in telling a number of people. It's been reported in, uh, in Bob Costa's paper, The Washington Post, as well as in The New York Times, that the president has told multiple allies, aides, and friends uh, that he wants this memo released because he sees it as a way to undermine the Mueller probe and potentially to fire Rod Rosenstein, which would let him replace him um, with somebody who would be more amenable and more likely to either remove Mueller or to um, thwart the investigation by shutting it down, cutting off key avenues. Um, one of the president's pro uh, long-standing problems with this entire investigation is, look, Devin Nunes and Paul Ryan cooked up kind of a sham process here, and they gave an explanation that, look, this is just about uncovering FISA wrongdoing. Uh, we know that's not true, but the president, you know, can't stick to the strip, script. He can't stick to the cover story. I, I, I suspect if, if he were to sit down with Lester Holt on Sunday before the Super Bowl, you'd see him confess to the whole thing, like he, like he did a year ago when they had a story for why they fired Comey, and the president just came out and sort of, you know, blurbed or, or blurted out that what he was really doing was trying to, to end the Russian, Russian investigation. It's the same thing here. I think everyone knows it. Uh, speaking of, I mean, Don Jr. told us, what was it yesterday on Twitter, that uh, they fired McCabe. So it's so confusing who's quitting, who's getting fired, and why it's happening. Ken, uh, from your reporting, what do you know about how the president is making his decision? Because I saw him on that hot mic the other night at State of the Union. Yep, 100%, we're releasing it. And Kellyanne Conway paints a far more measured uh, response. Well, look, from everything we know, the President of the United States wanted to release this memo before he even knew what was in it. Because as Matt says, he believes this is a way to strike out at the Mueller investigation. And it's fascinating because the intelligence community has, you know, once they realized this memo was probably going to be released, they swung into action and started a process of <clears throat> reviewing it to make sure that they, they can redact anything that's really sensitive and damaging. But <clears throat> it, it, it appears from what the White House was saying yesterday that they're going to ignore that process, just go forward and release the whole thing. And look, if Donald Trump was really concerned about FISA abuses, he could say, look, let's turn this over to the independent FISA court judges, and we'll, we'll give it to them in and secret. And didn't they just vote to approve keeping the same FISA practices like a week ago? It's a different part of the law, but absolutely. And these same Republicans who are pushing this were absolutely silent when Edward Snowden was leaking and there was all kinds of concerns about potential FISA abuses on the left. These Republicans were saying, hey, nothing to see here. Let's move along. Okay, call me a nerd bird, but Robert... Ken uh, mentioned it quickly. I think it's a big deal. In the Washington Post reporting, there's a quote. Before he even read it, Trump became absolutely convinced of one thing. The memo needed to come out, which, of course, is the exact opposite of what his spin guru, Kellyanne, Kellyanne Conway, said today when she said the president is taking this seriously and taking his time. So Kellyanne Conway is his front man on cable news saying one thing, and you're reporting the opposite. And we all know from whether we're talking fire and furry or people we speak to in the White House, the president's not a reader. While the president may be advised by some of his aides in the White House to go through a process over recent days to review this memo, we all know, based on our reporting, that he's, he's always watching television. He's keeping an eye on how the right wing of the Republican Party is reacting to certain issues. And he saw the rising call for the release, and he's latched himself onto it. You, you saw it during the State of the Union address when he had some huddles with members. He was nodding to the fact that he was moving towards releasing the memo. But the bigger challenge for this White House, for the Republican Party. You see it in the president's tweet this morning and in House Speaker Paul Ryan's comments yesterday. They are now raising institutional, fundamental questions about the FBI and the Department of Justice, wading into churning political waters uh, in, in in a sense, politicizing, even though they say they're not politicizing institutions that try to be averse to politics. And they say that they're trying to split the hair and they're not against the agents, they're only against the leadership, uh, but they're raising these bigger questions and it's, it's going to be hard for them to make that argument in the coming days in a successful way as these institutions come under fire. Is that not stunning that he gets his content not from his intelligence briefings, but from cable news. I asked somebody in the administration this week why the president consistently gets numbers wrong as it relates to the economy, winning numbers. He consistently overstates them when he could get the facts from the Labor Department, from the Treasury Department. And the answer I got was he gets his numbers from Sean Hannity. Uh, Kim, Axios is reporting this thing could be a dud 
If that's the case, what's the fallout for Republicans? Well, I mean, I think it's probably going to be a dud just because what we know is that there potentially was information about the Steele dossier in the application for a warrant. And if that is the smoking gun, it's kind of a so what. I mean, what people are forgetting here is that we have an Article Three judge with a lifetime appointment and salary protection, someone that is by the framers of the Constitution inst institutionally designed to be apolitical, who signed this warrant. So we have accountability. And as far as transparency goes, the notion of national security information being transparent is an anathema um, to our being able to function in that regard. So, so here I think really the scandal isn't so much what the president's doing because the president is going to do what he does. It's what Congress has done. That is really jumping the jumping the fence when it comes to the separation of powers, creating a drama that did not need to to, to exist, and impugning the credibility of our, our criminal uh, law enforcement system, which really um, for the long term every American needs to be very concerned about because we don't want to politicize criminal justice system then we all lose imagine if Devin Nunes is feeding us a nothing burger remember how much Republicans talked about those a few months ago Matt is there any chance this entire episode could play into Mueller's investigations hand showing more uh, attempt to obstruct justice yeah, I think that's a very real possibility that this blows up in the president's face, not just because this is a dud, but because his actions in the days leading up to this release, leading up to the release of this memo uh, show another pattern of him trying to thwart the, the Mueller investigation, trying to shut it down. I think he would have a defense for why for, for, for the, the ultimate decision to release the memo because Congress served it up to him in a process. What is going to be much harder for him to defend is his intervention with the Justice Department. After the Justice Department said publicly, we believe the release of this memo could impede the investigation, could compromise the investigation that we are conducting into Russian interference in the election. Donald Trump is a subject of that investigation. And after the, the Justice Department said that, that publicly, he sent his chief of staff, uh, John Kelly, to castigate the attorney general, to castigate the deputy attorney general, uh, to castigate other uh, members of senior law enforcement. That looks a lot like uh, what he has done in other cases when he's tried to shut this, this investigation down. And what's clear, what, what makes it such a problem for him is his motives are so transparent. As we said earlier, he's made clear he's not doing this because of FISA reform. He's told m multiple people around him he's doing this because he's trying to shut down the investigation. I would be very surprised if this, becomes an, if this doesn't become another incident that Bob Mueller decides to take a look at. All right, let's bring Jim Comey into the mix. Jim Comey, who Hillary Clinton would say caused her a world of hurt, and the president would make the same argument, tweeted this. All should appreciate the FBI speaking up. I wish more of our leaders would, but take heart. American history shows that in the long run, weasels and liars never hold the field. So long as good people stand up. Not a lot of schools or streets named for Joe McCarthy. He's uh, talking about FBI Director Chris Wray, who has objected to the memo's release. And, you know, Chris Wray, appointed by President Trump, has been pretty strong thus far <coughs> standing up for his own agency. Ken? He has. And there's, there's been some speculation this morning, you know, that he may threaten to resign if this memo is released. Everything we're hearing at NBC News is that he has no plans to do that. Because the thinking is, in his camp, how would that help the FBI? I mean, he's someone independent. They need, they need a director in there who can protect them from this political interference. But this is absolutely a watershed moment. Um, you know, he was praised not only by Jim Comey, but by the FBI Agents Association for making this forceful stand, saying don't release the memo. But at the end of the day, it's the president's But decision. if you can't credibly do your job, it's fair to say, I'm going to resign if I can't do it. I can't represent this agency. But I think a lot of these guys are making a calculation that they can they can protect these institutions staying in place. I mean, could there be, you know, do we want Donald Trump to have a more malleable FBI director than Chris Ray? Perhaps not. Stephanie, aye, aye, aye. Can, All right, Stephanie can, I, can I make one last point, on, quickly, one quick yes. point on that? I think that's exactly right what Ken said. And what we've seen from Chris Ray during this episode is he is not afraid to stand up the pres to the president when the president wants him to do something unethical and inappropriate. We need an FBI director hanging around. Because